Hi everyone, welcome to a new bridge guide. In this video, I'm going to be talking about his signature ability, Fault Line, and explaining how to use it on defense and attack. Remember that you can find my other bridge guides in my playlist, the complete bridge guide. I will leave an info card and a link to that playlist in the description. For all of you that don't know me, you can call me Funny. I'm a bridge one trick with over 700 hours and more than a thousand matches played with him. If you're interested in bridge gameplay and highlights, make sure to check out my channel as well as my socials. Enjoy the video. Fault Line is a very straightforward ability. It's a line that the longer you charge it by holding mouse 1, the longer it gets. And when you let it go, it will concuss people in all that area. You can control its range by releasing at different times when charging it. Or you can hold it and release it whenever you want. And if you want to cancel, just switch weapons. One thing to know is that the hitbox on the screen is inaccurate, so you should always aim with your minimap. It has a cooldown of 40 seconds, so I tend to use it at the start of the round, and then I usually get a second or a third charge in the round. As all bridge abilities, it can go through walls. And another important thing to know is that it has a distant margin of 8 meters from the agent that it will not cover, and therefore won't stun people. So keep that in mind when trying to concuss someone that is close to you. For these scenarios, you will have to back up before throwing it. When people are concussed, they can't run. They will be slow and this effect will last for about 3.5 seconds. They should also have a hard time aiming since it affects the vision too. Keep in mind that it will also affect your teammates. It's a pretty quick ability. You keep it in less than a second, and if you want to throw it fast, you can just spam it and it will shoot very fast. You also take your gun out as it dazes people, so it's good for pushing it yourself. What I usually do on attack is use it at the start of the round to gain the first pick. This also counters operators holding aggressive angles, since being dazed, you can't ADS. Make sure to wait for it to concuss, or else Chamber can to be right before being stunned. And the same goes for Jet with her dash. You can also bait utility by doing this, making the enemies invest it on stopping you from pushing. When executing sight, you can daze certain positions where the enemy can be holding crossfires or timing a peek on you. This helps as a momentary cover for you and your team when entering. Obviously, this one replaces smokes, so the best you can do is cover angles that your smokes can't. Remember that distributing the side between your teammates helps maximizing your utility. You can combine utility with your teammates too. Any agent can be helpful. You can also daze positions with the intention of getting a kill. Close angles can be cleared by you and most of your teammates. For further ones, it will be better to use a jet or a race, thanks to her movement abilities. Thanks to its range, you can try to fake sight by stunning from far away, but the enemy can locate you just by looking at the shape of the explosion. As you can see in this clip, you can assume I'm stunning from catwalk or top midish. This will depend on the yellow you're playing in. I'd say that below plat it will work sometimes. And lastly, I wouldn't recommend it for very close angles, since people tend to play with shotguns and even though they are dazed, you're a big target and then can kill you in two or even one shot. A tip I can give you for avoiding getting tapped after stunning is to pick as your tremor explodes. When you get concussed, you receive a big aim punch that throws away your grass replacement. But after a second, you can still manage to recover and have a pretty good chance on landing a headshot if you're good enough. If you pick as it explodes, you will have more advantage in the duel. You can also jump pick for messing with their grass replacement. My take on defense with Breach is that you have two options with your teammates by investing util in making time, or playing off it and getting kills, whether it's you or your teammates. For playing off your util, you can be aggressive or passive. If you're aggressive, you're going to the enemy. On defense, this can be very good since they don't expect you to push. What I like to do, depending on the map, is to stun and then pick aggressively. You can also add a flash to maximize your chances on getting kills. I usually do this if I solo push. If I go with a teammate, I like to flash first and then stun. By dashing aggressively, you can also get to more aggressive positions, like wine, 
or this spot on B main. This will most likely work if you can cast every round and bait for your teammate, so people expect you to do the same thing, but you're actually conditioned the enemy to think that. So let's say I always stun this and then pre-fire. Then one round I do the same and my teammate pushes and then flash for him. Or if it's a flash character, they can flash and you help them with your aftershock, a stun or a deeper flash. If you're playing passive, you're letting the enemies come to you and then pick. One thing you can do is time their push. Just wait for a smokes or a flash and then can cast. If you have a good timing, you daze them when entering and get some kill. Or when they have already gotten in, daze for your teammates and play a crossfire. You can also combo your stun with utility, like a race nade or a Kijoi's nano swarms. If the enemy is going to other side, you can daze from the other side of the map to help your team, like BMA from Guardian or Short from B side on Bind. You can combo your stun with your aftershock to kill scouting agents like Soba or Sky. I'll explain more of this in my aftershock guide. Don't overcharge your stun. Always try to charge it just enough so you are free more quickly and help your teammates. If you jump before charging and bunny hop, you can maintain momentum for a little more, though you will lose speed after throwing it. Always look at your round history by pressing tab after dying or in the next round to know if your utility is actually impacting the round. If you always can cast something and you're not even displacing anyone, stop doing it. Save your stun for later. And that's all for now. If this guide helped you, please leave a like and share it with a friend that's trying to learn bridge. Next guide will be about his aftershock and then I'll make map guides. Thanks for watching.